from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods of moving and storage studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Number one best-selling author, Ramsey personality, Christina Ellis, is my co-host today on this special Thanksgiving edition of The Ramsey Show. The phone number is 888-825-5225. If you've never been around us on Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving, among many other opportunities around here, we pretty much believe in being a cheese factory. <laughs> we like cheese and we like being cheesy and um it, it's you know we own the show so we get to do whatever the flip we want to do with it so that's what we do so if you didn't know there was a lady named sarah josephina hale in the 1800s that ran a uh, a magazine of sorts called a goodies ladies book and of course it was all things for ladies and what to do in the kitchen and so forth in the 1800s uh she also is noted with having um composed or written the nursery rhyme mary had a little lamb she was very famous in the 1800s and for 30 years every year she wrote to the president of the united states asking them to set aside a certain day nationally for thanksgiving Different states had Thanksgivings. Uh, George Washington had asked for a date of Thanksgiving, but there was not an official holiday of Thanksgiving. Finally, after 30 years, the president in 1863, Abraham Lincoln, decided that she was right and went to the Secretary of State, William Seward, uh, which was a bit of an enemy of his, but it was on his cabinet. They were kind of crossing swords all the time, but Seward was a quite a wordsmith, and ask him to uh, create the proclamation making this a holiday. I read it every Thanksgiving on the air because it's important for you folks to remember how this nation should operate, used to operate. This is from the President of the United States, October 3rd, 1863, the year that is drawing towards its close, has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, others have been added, which are of so extraordinary a nature that they cannot fail to penetrate and even soften the heart which is habitually insensible to the ever watchful providence of Almighty God. In the midst of a civil war of unequaled magnitude and severity, which has sometimes seemed to foreign states to invite and to provoke their aggression, peace has been preserved with all nations. Order has been maintained. The laws have been respected and obeyed, and harmony has prevailed everywhere except in the theater of military conflict, while that theater has been greatly contracted by the advancing armies and navies of the Union. Needful diversions of wealth and of strength from the fields of peaceful industry to the national defense have not arrested the plow, the shuttle, or the ship. The axe has enlarged the borders of our settlements, and the mines as well of iron and coal as of the precious metals have yielded even more abundantly than heretofore. Population has steadily increased, notwithstanding the waste that has been made in the camp, the siege, and the battlefield, and the country rejoicing in the consciousness of of augmented strength and vigor, is permitted to expect continuance of years with large increase of freedom. No human counsel hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, hath nevertheless remembered mercy. It has seemed fit It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. And I recommend to them that while offering up the ascriptions justly due to him for such singular deliverances and blessings, that they also with humble penitence for our national 
perverseness and disobedience. Commend to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged. And fervently implore interposition of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with the divine purposes to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. In testimony whereof I've heretofore set my hand and caused the seal of the United States to be effect, to be affixed, done this, um, done at the city of Washington this third day of October, the year of our Lord, 1,863, President Abraham Lincoln. Ooh, wow, that's powerful. I... If it doesn't make you, regardless of your party affiliation, yearn for someone of that level of character to actually show up anywhere on the landscape and and even just drive by the White House. (laughs) Uh, Wow. Wow. It's a, yeah, this is this kind of uh, humility uh, and... uh, acceptance and observance that in case you didn't know the, the thanksgiving's not about worshiping turkey and football by the way it's about saying thank you lord thank you god according to abraham lincoln who made this the holiday so let me just go to the source this is what he's saying is very clear here that this this holiday is about us stopping for a moment I guess we could call it a religious holiday Mm. because we're supposed to say thank you to the Lord for the blessings that he's given us. That's what the holiday was put in place for. Now, you can not like that or whatever, but that's the the, them's the facts, ma'am. So this is the way it is. And pretty cool. Uh, And you've got to love the language. Oh, my goodness. If anyone spoke like that today, you'd be looking at them cross-eyed like they walked out of a time machine. But... uh, because we're all like, we're all about, yeah, huh, <laughs> what, so. uh, OMG, <laughs> you know, the, the, the use of language is just completely gorgeous, and I mean, it's just fabulous, I, I'm not a writer, and I, and I wouldn't want to sit and read that type of uh, lingo for three hours, my eyes would cross, <laughs> but, uh, but isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful and just a reminder of what they were going through then and how grateful they were. In the middle of the Civil War. Right. It's perspective. Wow. Stop and say thank you, Lord. So uh, your ticket on the air today, if you want to talk about your life and your money, we're here to help. But your ticket on the air is what are you thankful for? And Cheese Factory is invited. (laughs) We like Cheese Factory. Open phones at 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225. Two two five. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author is my co-host today. Lacey is with us in Indianapolis. Hi, Lacey. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you, Dave. What's up? Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, well, I wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got. So I got to get. I got to get in my zone here. Before I let you on the air, what are you thankful for? Oh, I'm so thankful for my parents and um, what a godly relationship they have, and that they've pointed me to Christ. 
So very I'm cool. For them. I like that one. Good. Okay. What's up? <laughs> so my parents, my wonderful parents, have come to me recently um, and asked to pay off my mortgage. Um, I have about fifty-five thousand dollars left on my home. Um, I am completely debt-free. Other than that, I am a single thirty-two-year-old teacher. Um, and they are everyday millionaires. They follow your your uh, advice, and um, it wouldn't be a gift. It would be me paying them back, um, but instead of owing the bank, I would owe them at a lower interest rate. Um, I know you don't love mixing family and money and all of those things, but I, I didn't know what your thoughts were on this. Um, I have a great relationship with them, but I'm very hesitant also. You have siblings? I do. I have a brother. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I I will make a suggestion before I say don't do this. (laughs) Instead, (laughs) instead, I would recommend they just make it a gift and reduce your portion of the inheritance by that so that your brother is not cheated. Okay. Okay. Now, here's the reason. Um, A, you're not a spoiled brat. They're not, um, they're not, you know, they're not making your life too easy. They're just taking, they're just using some of their wealth to perpetuate wealth in their family tree by making you hundred percent debt free as a teacher at 32, which leads you into millionaire status very quickly. Right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So that's what I would do if I were them and I would okay. never loan my kids money. And here's why 100% of the time. You mentioned your faith. Uh, the yeah. Bible says it never, there's no caveat. It doesn't say except for mom and dad. It says the borrower mm-hmm. is slave to mm. the lender. And so 100% of the time, no matter how nice your master is, no matter how good your master is, you're still a slave. No matter how kind mm-hmm. they are, how functional they are, how good their boundaries are, you are still a slave. And you will feel it. As John, as John Deloney says, in your body, your body will mm. keep score. And, it might, <laughs> and and you'll know this when Thanksgiving dinner tastes different when you eat with your master yeah. rather than your mama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was what I was afraid of. And I, I was hesitant as well. I just yeah. wanted to hear. And it's I mean, not you, and it's not so you being ungrateful. Right. And I'm not trying to talk right. them into if they don't want to do it at all. That's fine, too. You have a mortgage. Right. You're OK. You're not dying. Yeah. You're everything's that's good. good. But, but um, I just don't want, you have such a wonderful, and you, you outlined it three different times, great relationship with them. I wouldn't mm-hmm. want to take a chance on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think they'll I be agree. resistant at all to just giving you the money versus lending it? Um, that's a hard one. They, they are so generous, and um, they have gifted my brother and I both smaller portions of money in the past just as gifts to say like put this toward your mortgage or put it toward whatever you need um and and they've been hey, very generous in that and they're very equal it, it, in that cu- this don't. is this is going to be weird for you so let's change the conversation let me give you a tool okay blame okay. me <laughs> whoa <Okay. laughs> no i'm saying because if you go to them and say mom dad i got this great idea won't you give me the money instead that's just that's awkward right <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. that's weird. So just say, hey, I called Dave and he said, don't do the mortgage. And um, he, he said the only way he would do it if it was his kids would be to give it. And if you don't, I don't want you to, I don't want to ask you for that. But that's what Dave said. I feel okay. like that's yeah. a pretty big pass. Yeah, just throw it off, throw it off <laughs> yeah. on me. I can handle it. Yeah. So when, when my mom calls in, Dave, you be ready. <laughs> oh, I'll be absolutely ready. I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll be kind to her, but I will tell her the truth like I always do. <laughs> happy thanksgiving Lacey. appreciate you calling in very cool stuff all right uh craig is in new york city hi craig happy thanksgiving what are you thankful for hey david christina it's a pleasure to be on the air happy thanksgiving sure what, uh, what are you thankful for I'm most, I'm most thankful for uh you know jesus christ changing my life mm. amen and amen all right how can we help today all right so yeah i'm 24 years old um you know, my whole life I was told to buy a home, and now that I'm of age to do so for myself, my wife, you know, have a baby on the way coming January. Um, 
I'm just scratching my head wondering if it's even worth it anymore. You know, where I live, I can't even buy buy like a burnt down shack for three fifty. So <laughs> that's the <a> God's truth. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, it feels a little hopeless right now for you uh, in your particular situation, and you're feeling the weight of the responsibility of the new life that's getting ready to come to you, and you're like, "Holy crap, this just got real." Exactly. Yeah. So all of that to say, you're, you might not be ready to buy a house today, and that's okay. Mm. When you're saying your whole life you've been told you should buy a house, but do you want to buy a house? I do want to buy a house. You know, the freedom of owning it is a lot nicer than, you know, we, we have a really good situation. We only pay 1400 a month, uh, which where we live is, like, amazing. Oh, yeah, you, that's a deal. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I just want to also thank you guys because of you, you know, we're able to pay off $30,000 of student loan debt. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I could say I'm debt free now, so, mm-hmm. which is Great. awesome, but it, it's taken a long time to just, you know, stash away and yeah. it's, you know, we're about a year into the process now. Good so for you. Probably have another. Well, if yeah. you don't buy a house for two years or three years, that's fine. That's not the end of the world. And you're in a very expensive yeah. market, so it's going to take you getting on top of the income side of things and getting a good, strong down payment to make it happen. Let's pan back from that and say, go back to your original question, which kind of had a hopelessness tone to it. It's like, is it even <laughs> worth it? Is it even worth it? Well, yeah, it is worth it. It's not worth doing it stupid. And it's not worth, yeah. you know, buying a house you can't afford and all that kind of stuff. And it's, So take your time and do it, do it with wisdom, but it's worth it. And here's why. Two things happen with homeowner. Three things happen with homeownership that make you want to do it as a long-term play versus renting your whole life. Okay. Number one, rents go up every year. Since God was a boy, yeah. rents go up every year. I, I mean, I, I've had my real estate license since 1978. Rents go up every year in every market. They go up every year. They don't go down. And, and every year. And so you're going to have, you know, every year, more and more and more of your money is going to go out the door for housing. And if you buy a home and you lock down your payment, your rent doesn't go up anymore. That's run, number one. Number two, the value of the house goes up. And when you, when you rent, obviously, you don't own anything that's going up. Number three, as we have studied millionaires, 10,000 of them, we find the primary two things that are in their bucket that allow them to build their first million to $5 million worth of wor- net worth is their 401k Roth IRA retirement plan in good mutual funds like we teach and a paid-for house that has gone up in value. And so getting to work to pay that off. So it's a great wealth-building tool. It stabilizes the largest line item in your budget, which is housing. And if the largest line item in your budget is going up every year, that sucks. Yeah, it definitely leaves you vulnerable. But I think in your situation, it's kind of important to separate things out. So you've got your personal situation and thinking through, is this the right timing for us? And no. then you have, yeah. you know, the market and the world and everything like that. Don't let your situation and thinking maybe you should wait a year or two make you start getting negative about the the market. Start looking at news articles. Start getting hopeless. I mean, it's so easy to get drugged down into those feelings of negativity, especially when the whole news cycle is talking about how bad real estate is and how there's not hope for our generation and you can't buy a house now. Like, don't let your feelings and fears, you know, get wrapped up in what the world is saying right now. Well, if, if timing for you is bad and the market timing is bad, that does not invalidate a lifetime right. of real estate ownership. The, the, to your point, those are different things. Separate those out. I'll give you the first two. The last one, no, I won't give you. This is The Ramsey Show. real estate and I want you to have a house but I don't want a house to have you that's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right these guys are awesome they'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you that means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan they show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth 
faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Church Hill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Patrick and Heather are here to do their debt-free scream. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to have you. Where do you guys live? Rochester, New York. All right. About an oh. hour away from the Snowmageddon. Yeah, really. <laughs> For real. You just dodged that, huh? We sure did. Wow. Well, welcome to Nashville, where we don't have that. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> Not very here. often, it's but when we do, it's it's the worst of the worst. Yeah, welcome, guys. Good to have you. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy Thanksgiving to you. To so you you're here to you. do a debt-free scream. How much have you paid off? $84,455. Excellent. How long did this take? 26 months. Good. And your range of income during that time? Anywhere between 120 and 155. And now, depending on side hustles this year, <laughs> somewhere probably in the 125 to 130 range. Very good. What y'all do for a living? We're both teachers. Both All teachers. right. Good for you. Well done. So uh, what kind of debt was the 84000 Oh, my gosh. It was like everything. <laughs> it, was a, it was a whole bunch of normal. We had some credit cards we had a couple of cars we had student loans a lot of student loans we have very expensive brains the great american <laughs> <laughs> the great american nightmare right yes indeed oh, truly oh is. my gosh wow how long have you been married uh, almost well it'll be four years this spring yeah okay so after you've been married for two years you look up and go oh uh, well, you got to change some stuff. Uh, tell me what happened halfway. Yeah, you, get a, you get in the marriage thing, you go, whoa! So it's a second marriage for both of us, and we made far too many money issues, mistakes the first time around. Yep. And um, we ended up, we got married yep. almost four years ago. And we actually lived in two completely separate households for the first year that we were married. Because, you know. She had an established home, and I had an established home, and we just... We couldn't put all... We actually have four children, and we couldn't, like, put everybody all together under one roof immediately. Oh, wow. So we were, like, we were saving and saving to be able to do that. And, you know, a year later, we finally found a home um, on foreclosure, because who doesn't love a good <laughs> deal? Mm -hmm. um, and then we, like, paid the closing costs, and we're going, man, that was a lot of money. Oh, gosh, there's still all this other debt. Oh, my gosh, we need to do this God's way. Oh, my gosh, let's get going. And then we just kind of started. Oh, wow. <laughs> We were, okay. we were each kind of working a day, the, the proverbial Davish plan, right? We were working it sort of separately, holding each other accountable, and then getting married. We combined our finances, but we're still living separately because circumstances, that was just kind of how it worked. And um, but, the, but seeing that closing cost check go across the table yeah, and all of a sudden saying, okay, it's, it, it's time that really ratcheted up the, the intensity for us. And it was... It was game on from there yeah so what did this journey look like for you guys what did you do to get out of debt <laughs> well, we, <laughs> it's always good when it starts with a chuckle it, well it, it is and it's funny because as teachers i mean we work we don't work like the 40 hour a week no work you know what i mean because I, I teach english and he teaches chemistry and so there's a lot of just outside work and a lot of outside planning so it was always kind of going, oh man, there's never any time to do anything. There's never any time to do anything. And I direct the um, musical theater program at our school. So that was my primary side hustle for a while until I realized that doesn't really pay a lot. So I got another job at Kohl's and that helped out a lot. And he was coaching. And yep, I've coached. Um, I work as a baseball umpire. So I work mm -hmm. uh, officially eight games all throughout the, the region, you know, in the spring and the summertime. So those were the cool. two major side hustles we had. But, you know, that, we were like uh, ships in the night for a long time. 
Yeah. <laughs> and chasing so the kids around and everything the, else. You sold the other two houses, though, right? Yeah, we did. And so then you end up with the one, the new one. Yep. The foreclosure one. Yep. Okay. And then it's game on with the cars and all the mess. Yeah, and, and we were fortunate enough to be able to finagle the from the sale, being able to pay off one car immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then the other one. It kind of gets it started. It really yes. did. And yeah. it was it like, was, oh, it was, wow. a, it was a good, like, catalyst to get the whole thing, the whole yeah. thing moving. And it was exciting. Connect, how'd you connect up with the Ramsey stuff? <laughs> through, well, initially through church. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through um, financial peace when we started dating and, and kind of realized we didn't want money stressors in our relationship. Right. And, uh, and now we actually coordinate. We've uh, mm -hmm. coordinated oh, a couple of times you. now. Yeah. So. Thank you. It's we need awesome. coordinators right now, particularly, yeah. Yep. It Excellent. was great. Yeah, and, and we, we've actually, enjoyed it both times. Right. For oh gosh, and we've had great people, and we've gotten to know a lot of really awesome people through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We've used so you the get married, and, buy a foreclosure, combine two households. Oh, and there's a pandemic too. Yeah, that was actually that was awesome. <laughs> I might be the oh, only person in know, the world. I thought first, so. I like staying I thought home, so, yeah. and <laughs> it saved a ton of money because there was no like, oh, maybe we'll Couldn't go, go to the movie, or maybe we'll go do this. Oh, there was open. no opportunity to do that. Let's go to a restaurant. That. Oh, not open. Not I open. had lots of time to watch YouTube videos and figure out how to fix all the stuff we needed to fix inside the house. Yeah. So it worked out <laughs> well enough. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it was Including your great. budget. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, yeah. not only do we pay off the debt, but we cash flowed, you know, renovations and, mm -hmm. and paid a cash for a car when a lease ran out. That was one of the other parts it of it, too. Is it that, awesome got, that got rid of that debt. Got yeah. rid of all that, too. And yeah, then, but God's providence is so awesome because right at the time when all the used cars, because we were 100% going to buy mm -hmm. a solid Dave car. And <laughs> then it worked out that a solid Dave car was my three-year-old lease. That, that, was, that was the best deal that we could get because oh, yeah. anything else we were going to be paying you know the same amount of money for something with huge amounts of mileage and how mm -hmm. many owners and whatever else right and, so yeah. we were like okay well i guess this is it and then we yeah. just paid cash for that and that was real cool and the, when i went apparently people don't buy cars with cash anymore because i went and they were like okay what do you do you want to finance this and i said <laughs> no i have a check and, and I, I was like the guy was like oh, no, okay do you do you need do you need to think about this? And I said, no, I just want to give you the money. And then I go, do you people take money here? And he was like, I don't know. And I've never done that before. Honest to God, and oh. I don't know how long he had been working there or whatever. No, but he, he, it took, he had it, never seen money. No, and it took a while. And then they. And if you had cash, he would have turned you in as a drug dealer. Well, I asked him, I go, would cash be easier or can I just write a check? And he's like, no, we don't want the actual cash. No, we, okay? no, please, God, no. No, I really wouldn't know what to do with that. Right, yeah. right. That would be wild. They were so flustered, they forgot to put the tax into it. So yeah. we actually had to go back and write another check. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I got a deal. Almost. I thought I got a deal. Yeah. What I mean, is essentially yeah. we did, but... What a strange world we live in when yeah. paying with real money is weird. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. But hey, we like weird here. <laughs> we do like weird. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun on this side, we can tell you yeah, that. Yeah, and sure. now we're looking at, okay, so there's only so much left on the house, so like how, oh, let's hustle through that too. Yeah. Yeah. What do you all tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Oh, consistency. Yep. Sacrifice. The budget. The budget. Mm -hmm. Shared vision. Yeah. Is a big part of it. Without that, it's it's almost impossible. Big deal. Teamwork. Big deal. It well, really uh, matters. Hey, we got the Live and Give bundle for you to say thanks for coming all the way to Nashville. We're so proud of y'all. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Well done. And that's the Total Money Makeover book, the new Baby Steps Millionaires book, both number ones. You can enjoy them or give them away, whatever you want to do. And a year subscription to our membership to Financial Peace University. You can give that to one, someone in your class that's deserving. That would be so Thank cool. You. Thank you. Thank you so neat. much. So, the ability to give and live. You guys are mm -hmm. going to be Baby Steps Millionaires before we know it. Well done, y'all. That's the plan. So proud Change in the family tree. Bring the kiddos up. Let's introduce them and ages and names yay this is grace and brennan mm -hmm. uh, both 12. ah perfect good good well done you guys excellent excellent job patrick and heather hey, grace and brennan rochester new york area eighty-four thousand paid off in 26 months making 120 to 155 count it down let's hear a debt-free scream three, three. Two, one, we're dead free!
That's how it's done. That's the sound of a family tree being changed. Oh, you got to love it. You got to love it. Man, I'm telling you what. Hey, guys, speaking of giving away stuff, uh, Financial Peace University on sale for $59, the cheapest price we've ever done for Black Friday weekend here. And you can buy it to give away that way. Yeah, put somebody through the nine-week class. Financial Peace University changed 10 million people's lives. Literally, 10 million people have been through the class. Yeah, $59.99. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash GiveFPU. RamseySolutions.com slash GiveFPU. And you can give it to somebody or give it to yourself. I don't care. Or give it to yourself and a bunch of people. (laughs) This is The Ramsey Show. Christina Ellis, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. Uh, this might have been, oh, the last two weeks or so have been the uh, I Told You So tour uh, with the crash of FTX and uh, everybody losing all their little Bitcoinies. And I told them not to be doing it, so I've been saying I told you so. And um, rather loudly and proudly, I might add, but anyway... I hate it. I hate people lost money, but they really did. And also, let me just rewind back to um, last spring. I told you that before the midterms that Biden would announce some kind of debt forgiveness program just in time to influence the midterms. And that he would and that when you looked into the details of the program, you would see that it didn't amount to much but that they would make a big splash like they had really done something. And they did exactly that. And everyone's talking about Biden forgiving the student loans, Biden forgiving the student loans right up into the midterms. And you notice no one's talked about it since the election. And he came out real quietly this week and said, well, you know, we're going to suspend the uh, forgiveness program. Uh, until the court rules on it because the Sixth Circuit Court has now put a permanent stay on it until there's an actual court case involved. It's not no longer a temporary stay. They've just put the quietus on this thing and the debt forgiveness program. So, yeah. Yeah, Dave, as I was reading this last night, I had the thought, how did Dave know? Like, you have called it at every stop along the way. So It's what I would have done if I were a politician with no principles. It's exactly Mm. what I would have done because it it was logical. It makes sense. It was was a very shrewd political move. No intention whatsoever, no expectation whatsoever that the loans would actually ever be forgiven. Did not notify... The Department of Education did not notify student dot a dot what's student go the student loan dot get what's it called student aid dot gov student aid dot gov major part of the administration's function to forgive the student loans didn't even tell them ahead of time. I mean, if you're going to roll out a program that's going to affect uh, tens of millions of people, you've got to get your staff ready for this. No notice to them whatsoever, and then announces it. And that tells us right there that, you know, you didn't think it was going to go through. I think it's just hard to believe that, like, these are real people's lives. This is, yeah. you know, a generation learning to relate to money and learning responsibility with money. And to think that they could just, you know, have all this confusion and kind of be played just, with as mean, a political yeah, pawn. Just be manipulated by politicians. Oh. You're so sweet. You never thought that would happen. <laughs> I didn't want to believe it would happen, Dave. <laughs> it's oh. happening. Yeah, and uh, so uh, federal student loan bills have been scheduled to resume in January. Of course, they're going to have trouble getting through a house that is now majority Republican. It's not going to happen. So, yeah. 
And of course, then he gets the the next shrewd move is watch this. It's gonna. The, I tried to do it. I tried, but the mean old Republicans wouldn't let me. That's that's coming next. That's the thing. So Biden administration on Tuesday announced it will extend the payment pause because it is the one thing they can do on federal student loans until after June because you should never have to pay your bills because there's inflation that I caused. That no, that isn't what they said, was it? Okay, no, that wasn't what they said. A uh, top official at the Education Department recently said student loan default rates could dramatically spike if its loan forgiveness program is thwarted. You think? Yeah, there ain't nobody paying these things. So the way we're not going to admit that this uh, this uh, head fake on the get forgiveness thing caused everybody to stop paying, uh, we're just going to not make you pay until June so that it doesn't show up. And by then you'll forget that the reason the student loan default rates went way up was because we told everybody we were going to forgive them and then we didn't. Oh, that's that. Yeah, Oops. Nice moves. Nice moves. So what does all this tell you? Man, it's been interesting. It, 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 it's confusing. That's what it really tells you right now. It, it's, it's kind of unfair and confusing. I actually asked a question on Instagram last night, um, just trying to get people's feelings on it. And the range is so wide. It's what was most interesting to me is even people with student loans who are paying off student loans are starting to get frustrated. They're like, just give us clear guidance. Let us know what to expect. This back and forth, this it's going to be forgiven. And yet, wait, all of this is just so confusing and people are getting really frustrated. Oh, I didn't see this. I just saw it in the article. I thought they were extending the payment because economic times were so bad. No. The Education Secretary Cardona says in a statement, we're extending the payment pause because it would be deeply unfair to ask borrowers to pay a debt that they wouldn't have to pay if it wasn't for the baseless lawsuits brought by Republicans. I told you they were going to blame them. <laughs> yeah, we're going to we, we're, we're going to just not make you pay payments because the mean old Republicans are not going to let us do the forgiveness thing. Mm. That's what she just said. Dang. Ouch. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, moral of the story is this. If you wait on this clown show, yep. both sides of the aisles together, you couldn't make a good circus if you mix the whole thing in a stew pot. Okay? If you wait on this clown show, if you wait on the island of misfit toys, it's called Washington, D.C. to fix your life, your life is always going to suck. If you're waiting on a government program to make your life shiny, your life's going to suck. It's not their job. It's not within their power to make your life awesome. It is within your power. Absolutely. And so here's a plan. You took out the loan. Pay it back. You owe it. I don't owe it. I didn't take it out. And I'm a taxpayer and I shouldn't have to pay your loan. A guy who is a welder and didn't go to college and makes $85,000 a year and works 60 hours a week and he's out there in sub-zero temperature somewhere in North America right now welding a building together for you to sit your little butt in, shouldn't have to pay your student loan. That's not fair. Hmm. Wow, mic drop. Something to think about. But I will say, if you have student loans right now and you hear this wake up call and you're going, man, I don't want to wait on Washington. I hate this feeling of confusion. And you want to get ready to just attack these loans. This is a great time to do it. This yeah, pause not, means, there's no interest. There's so no pile, interest. Pile on. They this just is not the time you. to not pay. It's the time to pay. Exactly. They gave you more time interest free. This is a blessing in that regard. You have time without interest occurring to pay off these student loans. Yeah. Get it. Get yeah. it. Knock it out. Another thing that's really crazy that's happening right now is they're sending out refund checks. Have you heard about that? They're sending out refund checks in, in anticipation of forgiveness. So if you're somebody who got a refund check for money you paid during COVID, do not spend that money. Do not spend that money. I, oh. actually, I actually had somebody reach out on Instagram and said that their student loan servicer sent them a refund check that they didn't request. They didn't ask for the money back. They had paid off their student loan. And then they got a check back in anticipation of forgiveness. Okay, yeah, here, here's a plan. Yeah, get these people out of your lives. They're completely incompetent, and they obviously have an agenda that has very little to do with what's good for you. Their agenda is what's good for them, all of them, including these servicers. All they want to do is keep you in debt. Yeah, literally. Knowing full well it's going to be 
a while at best and never at least. Well, and to send out refund checks during the holiday season when people are already (sighs) feeling a little pressed and it's tempting to see, you know, all this money in your bank account. I paid off my student loan and they sent me a refund check. Mm. Oh, that is maddening. I can't even get you people out of my life when I'm trying to get you out of my life. Right. <sighs> wow. I know. That, one, that one's heavy. But Sally Mae just didn't want her eviction notice. She, she didn't want to be kicked out. Navient didn't want to be put on the street where it belongs. They're begging you to come back in. They don't want to let you go. They don't want you to be free. Yeah. They like you. <laughs> they love you. They love you. <laughs> they think you're great. In the most toxic kind of way. <laughs> In the worst kind of <laughs> right. kind of way, right? Oh, my gosh. They are not your friends. Uh, on to a better story. On December 14th, we're going to do our annual giving show where we talk about generosity. And I want to hear from some of you that have got some great generosity stories where you gave and it changed someone's life and you can inspire other people to be generous or whether you received and um, you've got a great, inspiring story that way. Send us your giving story to ask at RamseySolutions.com. Ask at RamseySolutions.com. Put giving in the subject line, and the team will be back with you, and we'll get you lined up for that December 14th special edition of The Ramsey Show, all on giving. This is The Ramsey Show. Have you been inspired to make a change with your money? Want to know where to start? Take our three-minute money quiz to get a plan you can follow. Go to RamseySolutions.com and search for Get Started to get a plan for your money. of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Christina Ellis, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today as we take your questions at 888-825-5225. Happy Thanksgiving, America. Take a step back and be thankful. What are you thankful for? My goodness, we have so many things that we can't even count them all. So one of your tickets are the ticket for you to get on the show today. Once you make it past Laura, who is screening phones today. Um, well, just because Austin didn't. I mean, that's how that works. And so um, if you get past her, your other ticket to get on the show is uh, you have to tell us what you're thankful for. Well, that's cheesy, Dave. I know we run a cheese factory here. We're fine with that. Cheesy's good. I cry at Applebee's commercials, so it's okay to be cheesy, all right? Open phones at 888-825-5225. Michelle is in Green Bay starting off this hour. Michelle, what are you thankful for? Um, I'm thankful to God for the health and well-being and guidance of my family and friends. And as cheesy as it sounds, I'm thankful to um, Ramsey Solutions for putting out the information and guidance that they do because I'm in a very never thought I'd be here situation. Yay. Touchdown. Hey, we look, we like extra cheese on it. It's good. Thanks. Very good. Right. Well played. Well played. So how can we help today? So we were introduced to FPU in 2014. I've coordinated about a dozen classes to our local church. We, my husband and I, have paid off one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars since two thousand and fourteen. Oh wow! Um, that includes our house. Way to go, baby step seven er. So, I know, but like, so we're putting fifteen percent into retirement. We have an ELP. We're saving to beef up our emergency fund. It's only at four months. We're going to make it six. It won't take us hardly any time at all. We're saving for a new car. Um, and I just received a big bump in income while we were paying off debt. We were at about a hundred thousand. Now we're at about a hundred and forty thousand. Yeehaw! Now what do we do? 
Now what do we do? (laughs) Love it. I love it. Like we're so used to being intense and we have an end goal that we were always going for, Mm -hmm. which was paying off the house. Mm -hmm. It's just now, what do we do? Yeah. Well, it it is, um, you do move after baby step three from intense to intentional. And uh, you're just reaching a plateau that uh, it feels like you arrived and now I don't have a journey. And you do. I still have a journey. You've just got to define the journey now. It's a new journey. What's the next step? And so you always have to be intentional with your money, always. So you always need to be looking out a little bit and saying this is what we're aiming at. And uh, intentional is different than intense, though. Okay? Um, I've been yep. in, I've been at the intentional stage personally with Sharon and I for many decades now. We got way past the uh, baby step seven stuff, all that stuff a long, long time ago. And um, so we've just been intentional. And what we've learned to do is there are really only three things you can do with money. Give it, enjoy it, and invest it. And I would recommend that you systematically always, with a percentage or a dollar amount or whatever it is, you're always doing all three. And that means if your income increases, you're going to increase all three. Now, what has happened to us is, and you're going to be getting there someday, is the percentage that I put towards enjoyment, lifestyle, has had to get smaller and smaller because it was getting ridiculous because my income was getting so high. You see what I'm saying? I mean, if you put 5% of $100,000 towards lifestyle, that's one thing. If you put 5% of, you know, million whatever dollars, right, that starts to be cray cray. And so, um, you know, you just got to back down and go, there's only so much lobster you can eat, right? So, um, and, and so, you, but put a percentage for lifestyle, enjoying the money. And that way, when you're spending that, there's no guilt. It's like, I bought right. a nice new car, but it's a percentage of my, and I've got this other percentage towards generosity. And I've got this other percentage towards the long-term play of investing, changing my family tree and so on. Right. Um, yeah. and, and so, uh, our giving percentage is way higher than our consumption percentage today. And your, yours will get there. It won't be yet, not at 140000 even though you're 100% debt free. But you can kind of see the feel of it. And so then you start to go, okay, within giving, with my percentages being this, it's going to be this much money. What are my goals? And um, uh, I, had, I had talked to this guy that was really rich one time, and he uh, – he, he told me about it. He gave away a million dollars in one year. And I thought, man, that would be really cool. And then I did it. And then yep. I thought, well, uh, now what am I going to do? Okay. I want to give away a million dollars in one day. Ooh. And I was able to do that last year. That's and cool. so that was a kind of a cool day. And, um, you know, I was, oh no, it was a year before last, as a matter of fact, come think of it before you came, before you came on board with us. Yeah. And so, but, um, yeah, so and I'm not bragging. I'm just saying you got to have a goal. You have something you're aiming at with right. your generosity. You have something with your with your net with with your investing. It's I want to hit some net worth goals. I want to hit this and hit that and hit that. But having something that you're aiming at gives it some meaning and gives some power to your intentionality. Yeah. Hey, Michelle, how do you feel about your change in circumstances? Um, it, it's it. Like, honestly, I want a ticker tape parade and I want balloons and I want a party, <laughs> but. <laughs> But it, it's an odd feeling because we have been so intense for so long. Even our ELP has said that we need to give ourselves a raise because it's it's almost like we don't know how to let off yeah, now. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. that's normal. And it's just <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, when you when you do something really, really intense, uh, and you come off the sports field, athletic field. It takes two hours for your adrenaline dump. Right. I mean, like when Christine and I are doing stuff on stage, we get hyped up. We're excited. You know, we got 5,000 people, 2,000 people out there or whatever on stage, and we're, we're jacked up. And we, you know, we cannot go back to the hotel and go to sleep. There's no chance. Okay. Right. So we all get together somewhere, the whole live events team, and we'll all just sit around and joke and cut up and, and stay up too late because we're going to be up anyway. I mean, it just takes a little while for the adrenaline dump, and that's where you are. You're, just, you're coming off the athletic field after the big game, and 
There's an adrenaline dump. Yeah, it does. That's it normal. Feels- That's normal. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And I just, I encourage you, too, to have that celebratory whatever it is for you guys. Like, I know you want the, the parade and the balloons, but what is that for you? Maybe you do balloons in a parade in your own house. Something that you can symbolically say, this is a huge achievement, and now we're on to the next I think you ought to go on like one of those super, super expensive cruises and oh. have them fill the entire room with balloons before you get there. That's I like the do. way you think. That's what you ought to do. <laughs> you got to celebrate it. I mean, and you got the money and you're not doing anything wrong. You've done a great job. I'm proud of you. I say it all the time. If you're a business owner and you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And when markets are shifting, it's even more important. You've got to know where you stand so you make your next move the right move. And you don't have to be in the dark here. Over 31,000 businesses, including my team at Ramsey, know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, planning, budgeting, and inventory so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Having everything in one place has saved my team hours each week since we made the switch to NetSuite. NetSuite is a game changer. So head on over to netsuite.com slash Ramsey to get a product tour today. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Someone did not notify my marketing department that prices are going up because apparently for Black Friday, we have the lowest prices we've ever had. I'm so confused. But okay, it's great deals for you, folks. Our number one bestseller, The Total Money Makeover, the audio book uh, right now for Black Friday, $7. Plug that in, listen to it on your next trip, your trip when you're going to, uh, over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go, right? You can just plug the audio book in. And uh, that's the way I consume them. I listen to them on my walks. I listen to them like I listen to podcasts. So, yeah. The new Millionaire Bundle comes with a total money makeover, Baby Steps Millionaires, and the Know Yourself Money Assessment, all for $25. Whoa, that's a deal. And if you're looking for something a little prettier than books, the Rachel Cruz Wallet is here in champagne, handcrafted from genuine leather. Looks really good. I don't know if they got any of the red ones left. The red ones may have gone already. So uh, check those out. But the Rachel Cruz Wallet, a very popular Christmas gift. It really is. Black Friday deals. Everything. All the books are $10. Even my latest number one, we've cut everything down. It's just Deloney was griping about it the other day because he's like, he doesn't get as much royalty when the price is down, right? And he's like, you guys are cutting the prices too much. Well, it's the way it is, Deloney. All right, Ramsey Solutions. Welcome to my world. RamseySolutions.com. Hit the store. Get the Black Friday deals. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings with free samples, free shipping, new promos they run all the time. You'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY and you'll get the best deal. Today's question comes from Brittany in Idaho. My company matches 50% up to 6%. I'm currently contributing 5%. Once I reach the 6% match, should I open a Roth or get up to 15% then open a Roth? Or do I stop until I pay off my student loans? I'm 36 with no kids, but engaged in hoping to have children. It's a great question. And I think a lot of people get confused. They get so excited by the match that they just start diving into investing. But if you're still paying off your student loans, you're in baby step two. So we would tell you to hold off on investing and focus that money on paying off the debt. We the key want is the key is it's a temporary pause. It doesn't. You're not going to be doing this for long. You're going to knock your student loans out really, really fast because you completely focus on them. Mm-hmm. So when we say stop investing, the key word is temporarily. Push pause on investing so you can completely focus. That's a big deal. 
Yeah. And and it feels a little counterintuitive at times because the match, a lot of people are like, but I'm giving up free money. It is counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. It's actually, the math on it's actually wrong. Mm. It really is. I mean, you're giving up a two for one match. I mean, $100 turns into $200. Mean, yeah. Meanwhile, you're just paying off a stupid Sally Mae. It's wrong. But what is right is over the scope of your life, your most powerful wealth building tool is your income. And when you get that back, you can build wealth. Mm. instead of trying to trick something with the math. So this is also about behavior. It's not just about math. Cleaning the deck on the stu- on all the debts, it, it it doesn't feel right. It's not fun. It's not, you know, unless you're around here, you don't get a touchdown. You know, around here, we give you a touchdown. Debt-free scream, yeah. confetti, all this stuff. But everywhere else, everybody's looking at you like you lost your mind. But you, when you clear the decks, you can breathe. Your shoulders drop. Your stress level goes down, your relationships go up, your career kicks into gear. All of these things happen. None of that happens with a match. Yep. And that's the key is I think so many people get focused on the math, but so much about winning with money is about behavior change. It's not super glamorous. It's not super exciting in the beginning, but it's so that you can get to a really awesome spot in the long run. Yep. That's how it works. And that's why you've got to do this stuff. you got to do it. you got to do it. you got to do it. So absolutely. So now once you're debt-free with student loans and we start investing, then the rule of thumb is match first, Roth second. Well, you kind of got that down, sounds like, Brittany. But here's the thing. You can do, if your 401k is a 401k Roth, you can do 401k Roth up to the match and get the Roth. And the, now the match portion is not Roth, but the rest of it's Roth. And that's what we would tell you to do. So Roth, match beats Roth beats traditional. So you always get all the match first. And then you do, if you only have traditional at, at the office, then do traditional up to the match. Then go outside and do an individual Roth. And then if you have to do more to get to 15%, go back and just do traditional. But match beats Roth beats traditional. And always do any Roth anytime you can. I mean, there's very few exceptions on that. So just just do all the Roth all the time, all the can, all you can, and uh, whether it's at your work or whether it's with the individual. So good, good stuff. Charles is with us in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Hi, Charles. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Happy Thanksgiving. You too, sir. What are you thankful for? Well, actually, I am thankful for my girlfriend. She's always stood beside me, you know, supporting my decisions. These things are boneheaded, and she's actually helped me get out of debt. <laughs> Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. How can we help today? Well, uh, a while back, I ordered a new 2022 Ford Maverick. Uh, I needed I needed a new vehicle. It's one I have now and have a lot of problems with. And uh, she was kind of against it. So I'm thinking maybe I better not get it. But then just curiosity, I put in Carvana to see what they offer me for it. They offered me $7,000 more than what I paid for it. So I'm thinking, get the car sells Carvana or like somebody, another dealership and use that money I make to buy like a beater car, you know, so it's more reliable, reliable to drive for right now. I realize I may have made pay a little taxes on the money, but still if it might be worth it to do that. So you don't have that car right now. This is like you would go out and buy the car to it's sell ordered. it. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Basically the Maverick's a very hot car right now. Everybody yeah. wants what dealers are selling over MSRP, but, but this deal is actually selling for under MSRP because they wanted to build their allotments up. So, so I'm um, going to use that money. Use are that you, money you're, I get. you're borrowing the money to buy this car? Uh, yeah, I did put a small down payment on it, and I got like a 1.9% uh, interest rate on you, it. You have the money to pay cash when the car comes in? Do I? Yeah, but I, that, that basically wiped me out. Yeah, but I thought you were going to sell it the next day. Yeah, but for well, I have to wait. I, I have to wait until like two, three, because I'm uh, buying it from out of state. So they have to send me the paper because of the title differences from where I'm buying it to here to North Carolina. That's all. Yeah. Then I would be able to sell it. But yeah. I'd probably spend to sell it by, uh, by Christmas or right after. See, I don't trust you. Okay. I think you're going to keep the car. I don't want. I, I, I think do you're going like to get the car I, and you're going to drive it home and you're going, I can't sell it. It's awesome. <laughs> She'd kill me if I kept it. I'll kill you if you keep it. <laughs> but as far as, I mean, as far as that's concerned, yeah, I do sell it. Do you think that's a logical thing to do? Only if you pay cash for it. Only if I pay cash for it. Because okay. what that will do is it will make you sell it. 
Okay. Because you get your stomach just got all upset when I suggested you pay cash for it, and you're going to want to get rid of okay. that indigestion, and you're going to get gotcha. rid of the car to get rid of that indigestion. Gotcha. If you finance this, you're going to keep it. Okay. Here, here, here's where I'm going, all right? I'm a car guy. I get it. That is a sweet car, by the way. It is. It's it is. freaking lights out, mic drop. It's a sweet yeah. vehicle. Now, I mean, I just, I, and I like stuff that goes wooden, wooden. I just, I love things with, you know, that thing will rock, too. It's, mm -hmm. what is this stupid thing? 500 horse, isn't it? What, the, the Maverick? Yeah, what's the horsepower? No, it's 250. It's only 250. It's a, really? It's a 2.0. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's the EcoBoost. It's not the hybrid. It's the EcoBoost. 250 oh, horsepower. God, that's awful. Okay. I thought it, had, I, I I thought mean, it had some go. All right. Um, that makes it worse. That's like a bad <laughs> Chevette or something. Um, hey, it's, right. not, it's, not a, it's not a Trans Am. I thought it was that. a go-go. I misunderstood. Okay, anyway, aside <laughs> from that, I was just that's just me talking <laughs> cars. But, okay, um, here's the thing. Um. The reason I'm accusing you of all of that is it's exactly what I would have done in an earlier version of me. Yeah. And I'm trying to keep you from being an earlier version of me because he was pretty stupid. I so, used to be bad with cars. Yeah. Well, no, I, 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 what, I'm what I had to figure yeah. out is, and here's a good rule yeah. for everybody out there, I had, to put my, I had to put things in position to protect me from doing stupid. And right. when you buy this thing on payments... There's a high likelihood you're going to keep it. But if you got the indigestion because you used your last dime to close on it and you got to yeah. flip it to put your money back in your account because you're freaking out because you're broke, that's mm -hmm. going to force you to do smart. And I'm trying to set up systems here that force me to do smart, make me highly uncomfortable if I'm being stupid. And um, that's what I have to do. I put automatic everything in. No stupid, full smart on automatic. And it wouldn't hurt anything at all if you just walk away from the deal, by the way. Wouldn't hurt a thing. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Matt and Christina are with us. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. Hi. How are you? Hi, Good to Hi have Uncle you. Dave. Thanks for being here. Where <laughs> do you guys you. live? Where do y'all live? Uh, we're about 40 minutes east of Columbus, Ohio. Oh, fun. Yeah. That's a nice area. Yeah. Welcome to Nashville. Yeah. How much did you pay off? So, 265000 in 11 years. Woo! Ooh, good for you. And your range of income over that decade? Um, so baby step two, we were in the 80,000 80, range. Um, and then we went up during four, five, and six. We're in the 140, 180 range. And I just got a bump. So about 218, 220 now. Wow. Good for you guys. Well months, done. Yep. And uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. And I work in the electronic fraud for a, a bank. Yeah, good yeah. for you guys. Mm -hmm. So four, five, six. That means this two sixty five included the house, your debt free house, and everything. It did, yes, Woo! yes, yeah. <laughs> Look at that weird people. <laughs> That's right. Yes. How old are you two weirdos? Thirty eight. All right, man. And a paid for house. What's the house worth? Uh, well, um, now probably about in the three hundreds, three thirty, yeah. three fifty somewhere in there. Cool. Probably, yeah. How much in your four hundred one k's and retirement plans? Uh, total what net worth about two eighty three. Oh. Or I'm sorry, six eighty three. 683. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. So, good. Good. Yep. You're almost with, millionaires. With the well house done. And the, and the yeah, you're going to yep. be there before you know it. Now, you're how old again? 38. 
38. So, yeah, 41, you're going to be millionaires. Yeah. Very good. Good for you guys. Excellent. Well yeah. done. Well done. So uh, what's what What other kind of debt was it other than the house? So um, do you want to talk at all? You want me to do it? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe step two, we, we sold a motorcycle. We sold – or not sold. Well, we, we paid it off, then sold it. Um, and then her – she had a SUV at the time and then about 40-ish – and student loans okay between the both of us and cool. you know her master's degree we we funded that cash and she's really smart so we had uh she got a lot of scholarships mm -hmm. um when we were after baby step two we paid for two cars cash i'm just bringing all this up for that person that's you know what i mean they get in a four five and six just you can do it <laughs> so yeah. that's yeah. when, that's we, when we, were, we were writing our stuff down that's you know something that we have two kids over there that you know no bills followed us home the bill came we paid it off cash mm. so so you guys were were normal you know you started out normal had different yep. debts yes. and then you obviously got on fire on this journey what did this look like for you I would say that originally, you know, we were very normal. We were a young married couple, and honestly, the fights that we were having were money fights. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, we felt like we had really good jobs, but at the end of the day, we never seemed like we had enough. Um, you know, we'd get the paycheck, and then it would be gone. Um, so our church offered Financial Peace University, and we took Financial Peace. And I would say after probably maybe the third class, we were kind of like, yeah, we can do this. And then by the end of it, we're like, we're going to do this. Like, we can pay off the SUV. We're like, yeah, it's not just the SUV. It's the student loans. And then it's like, okay, we're on this, and let's just keep going. I think that, you know, we're proof that the system works. Um, you know, following the baby steps definitely works. And I think, you know, being gazelle intense for, you know, that first, you know, 30 months, um, you know, it's hard. Um, but then the key now is just consistency. After that, it's just sticking with the plan, sticking with what you know. Um, and then you end up be able, being able to live and give like nobody else. Yeah. Well, yeah. Your, numbers, your numbers fit all the, the case studies of the millions of people that we've talked to. Yep. Um, I mean, exactly. The average millionaire and the millionaire uh, and, and the Baby Steps Millionaires uh, uh, research project that we did pays off their house in 11.2 years. You did 11 years. Um, you know, uh, they become millionaires within 12 to 17 years, and you're on track to do that easily. Uh, they do it by 52 uh, years old, you're not going to be anywhere near that because you started younger on this. Uh, you worked the bait. You, you worked your uh, your debt snowball, not counting the house, probably in less than three years, and um, that's that's also fits the guy. I mean, that, you just got you just walk down the process. I mean, you work down yep. the system exactly the way we talk about. Way to go, y'all! Thank you, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, you got to feel yeah. accomplished. It's it's surreal because we went to the old place um, 30 months on baby step two. We were at the old place, you know, what, nine years ago? I think. Yeah, yeah. 2013, 2013, December yep. of 2013. We actually did our debt-free scream um, at that point in time. And we're like, we got to go back. Now we've, we're baby step seven. We're going back. Do it again. Yeah, yeah. do it again. Yeah, this is this is good. A, a, a two-stage debt-free scream. That's like right. It. Yes, I like it. a like two-stage debt-free scream. The other That's one, what the old place for those of you, is it an old office before we built this building about three years ago? So, they were at the uh, the old place. Yeah, so, and uh, it was it was not as nice as this one. This one's <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, you got to come you know. see this place, people. It's beautiful. Yeah, come see it. Thank you. Thank so, eleven you. years. That's a long time to stay committed. A lot of people hear eleven years and they're like, I don't know if I could do that. You know, what what was the hardest part of that journey for you guys? I think the, we talked about it, consistency. Uh, like when we started, it was we saw our tithing. It was like embarrassing to even talk about you know, consistent tithing, and then things just you know fall into place. When we when we finished off, I always tell the story. When we finished off baby step two. We always we'd go out Black Friday because it's coming up. We'd we'd buy pillows on Black Friday. We sat there for like 30 minutes picking out pillows. We get to the front and we get it was free. We're like we don't need that. You know it was like 70 dollars worth of product at a department store. And we got it for free and it was like like we got that back. I don't. It's just I share that with people. At if you as long as you keep giving keep consistent it's gonna you know it works so do it <laughs> consistency yeah. over time yeah. yes. yep. i also think just remembering your why you know i think for us we wanted to change our family tree and be able to leave a legacy um and i'm also someone who wanted to be able to give you know and like he had said you know prior to starting financial peace you know we weren't doing wise things with our money you know we weren't able to live and to give like we wanted to um, and so this, you know, the program definitely taught us those principles. And now we've been able to, to be living proof of that. Yeah, you guys are fun. Well done. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you're, you're 38 years old and everything's paid for. Wow. 
How's that feel? It's, it's still sinking it's in, I guess. Nice. It's <laughs> very nice when you drive into your house and yeah, you're like, this I walked, is mine. I walked through the house yesterday. I was like, yeah, this carpet looks nice. You know, it's ours. <laughs> it just, it, it feels different. So Yeah, it, it does. It changes everything. People don't grasp the concept because it, it, it's as much spiritual and emotional as it is mathematical. Mm-hmm. And uh, until you're standing on that carpet and it's paid for by God, you know, it, it changes everything. Yeah. It's like, man, yeah. It's a it's a different level of boldness in your life, of uh, compassion, everything. It gets a little, just gets a little brighter out there. It's pretty cool. The shades are off. Yeah, well done, you guys. Very very well done. Sharp young couple, man. Heroes. Well done, guys. All right, you took control of your life. We got the uh, live and give bundle for you for you to give away the. Uh, uh, total money makeover book which obviously is a core piece and you'll be able to give that to somebody financial peace university membership you'll be able to give that to somebody you guys have uh, been through the class coordinated the class thank you for all of that very cool and the baby steps millionaires book because that's your next chapter in your story for sure so you just keep on rocking guys keep on rocking i love it awesome. let's bring the kiddos up what are their names and ages we have kinsey who is seven and luke who is three all right <laughs> Debt-free kiddos. Yeah. Do, do they know what's going on? They do. We've been pra- we practice the whole way down here. They've been practicing for months, probably. Right. Okay. Right and they know what this means. You, their mom and dad are heroes. They change their lives. Mm-hmm. Well done, you guys. Very, very well done. Matt and Christina from Ohio. Two hundred sixty-five thousand paid off house and everything. Eleven years. Did it make an eighty all the way up to now two eighteen? Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're We're dead dead free! free! You know, little Luke is old enough to remember that time his weirdo parents drove all the way to Tennessee to that strange radio show and did their debt-free scream. That time they paid off their house, that time that they never borrowed any money again, that time that their whole lives were changed. Mm. He's old enough to remember his mom and dad being heroes. That's powerful. I mean, that's the sound of a, you. You guys, if you listen, go back and listen to that again. If you listen to it on podcast, rewind and listen to it. You just heard the sound of a family tree changing right in front of you. This is The Ramsey Show. personality number one best-selling author is my co-host today Sharnice is with us in New York City hi Sharnice how are you hi how are you better than I deserve how can we help happy holidays by the way happy Thanksgiving so what are you thankful for I am actually thankful for a lot but um family friends I just recently moved to a co-op so I'm happy about that and my career good for you Cool. How can we help today? Yeah, so um, I live, of course, in New York City. I'm 34 years old. I'm a social worker, and I have a son who's six years old. Right now, I only have one stream of income, and I have 300, uh, roughly around $300,000 worth of debt. This is also including student loans, credit cards, etc. And I'm trying to prioritize what to focus on first. It's bringing on a lot of anxiety. Um, I do make about 60, I believe 65. I got a raise today, actually. And so I'm just trying to figure out how I can be debt-free in a short amount of time, take care of, you know, my son, have some savings. I can't save for anything. 
and just live comfortably. Uh, that's the biggest thing for me. Uh, I did file for bankruptcy in 2018, and I was fine until I recently moved this year. And uh, the credit card debt stacked up because of the move, and I had some medical issues. So, you know, this year has been really tough, uh, and now I'm struggling, kind of. Well, we're glad you called. That's first step. I feel like the way you're describing that, you've had your I've had it moment. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You're done with this debt. You're ready for something new. Totally. I just want to live comfortable. I want my son to have his savings. Where did, I have my where, own where did you move from? Well, I'm actually from New York City, but I moved from a studio apartment to a two bedroom co op uh, building. So you're broken deeply in debt and you increased your rent? Yes, I did. Mm hmm. <laughs> But we needed the space. But you're broken deeply in debt and you can't breathe. Yeah. Oh, and you ran up credit card debt to do that, too. As of this summer, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It went up. Yep. Hmm. Okay, let's back out for a second. Um, I can help you, all right? But this is a math problem at its core. And there's two pieces of information here. There's your income. And there's your debt load. And around here, we call that the shovel and the hole. You have a very large hole and a medium-sized to small shovel. Agreed? Agreed. Thus the anxiety. Thus the stress. The overwhelming feeling. The sense of hopelessness. The sense I'm going to be stuck here forever. I can't breathe. I don't see a way out. I've been there. I know how it feels. Okay? So you have a pretty radical situation, a very difficult situation that you find yourself in with the math. Would you agree with that too? Yes, definitely. The sad news is, and um, we love you enough to tell you the truth, kiddo. Uh, the sad news is radical, difficult situations require radical, difficult solutions. And the only way to get out of this highly toxic math is to do some bizarre things that are going to be very uncomfortable in the short term. You don't get an option. There's no option on the table where you get to do three things. Make $65,000 a year, have a wonderful life, and live in Manhattan. These three things, and, and, have, and get rid of $300,000 of the debt. These three things, these things don't work in the same puzzle. They don't fit together. Okay? So something's going to give. Something's going to give. The, you're going to give up the cool, cozy, cozy, wonderful life. You're going to do some crazy things to increase your income. Um, you're not going to live in Manhattan. I don't know. But you can't do what you're doing right now. It's not going to work in the next two decades. You're still going to be in debt. Because I can back this out and just tell you, if you had zero debt, living in Manhattan with a child as a single mom, on 65000 is no picnic. If you had zero debt, that's no picnic. Agreed? Agreed. And you got 300000 bucks sitting on top of your head. And yeah. uh, it ain't going away unless you make it go away. So I, I wish I didn't. Um, so I, I think you're going to pick your pain or it's going to pick you. Um, you're going to pick your pain. You're going to say, all right, we are going to live in a different situation for a short period of time. And it's going to be very uncomfortable for me and my child. And the hours I'm going to work are going to be freaking ridiculous so that we can have a great life later. We're going to live like no one else so that later we can live and give like no one else. Or you're going to choose to stay exactly where you are. And this stuff's going to come crashing down on you because this math does not work. It's not sustainable. Trying to have you I've, can't you can't pay for a co-op in Manhattan on sixty five k and service three hundred thousand. You can't even pay the payments and eat. Well, um, so the maintenance fee. So I do live in the Bronx. The borough is the Bronx, and I had took out a loan because it was thirty three thousand. So it's like pretty much it helps middle income uh, individuals with a co-op. And so I put a little bit down. 
and I'm paying it off um, slowly. I think I have like seven years to pay off the loan that they gave me. And then, of course, I have my car note, credit card debt, and student loans, private student loans as well. You bought the co-op? Yeah, so I, I bought the co-op. And you have a seven-year loan on it? Yeah, well, I can pay it off at any time, but I put a down payment on it. Um, it's it's like a program that helps you uh, pretty much. Uh, uh, are you, are you telling me you're going to have the co-op paid off in seven years? I They add on the extra from the loan to the maintenance fee, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, That's what cool. happens at the end of seven years? you got to go get a mortgage, right? It is pretty much a, a mortgage. I am a homeowner for that co-op. And, and you have it on a seven-year payout in the Bronx. I calculated it, and I believe that's how much it's gonna, how long it's gonna take me to pay off that loan that they gave me to cover the other half that I owe. So, what was the price? Uh, altogether, that co-op apartment was thirty-three thousand seven hundred and fifty. That was the price to buy a co-op in the Bronx. Yes. I am so confused. I would have said three point three million. Yeah. How did you get it for thirty three thousand dollars? Are you sure? Yeah. So it's pretty much like I said. It's a program in New York City that helps the middle uh, income uh, individuals, and they pretty much um, assist. So you have to come up with the whole. You have to come up with the whole amount, and if you can't come up with the whole amount. Uh, then you can go on a payment plan, and then they'll add it to your maintenance fee. It's called a maintenance fee. In case okay. You rent. This is the most heavenly yeah. program I've ever heard of, where you can buy a co-op in the Bronx for thirty-three thousand bucks. My mind is blown. Okay, I had no idea that this is uh, even possible or existed. I am still in shock and awe. So anyway, I guess I'll set that aside. If you got that deal, I'll let it rest. I have never heard of that, and it's mind blowing, and it has nothing to do with real estate values in the area. Nothing to do with that whatsoever. You can't buy that in anywhere in America, much less the freaking a borough of New York, one of the 18 boroughs of New York City. Not a chance. Okay, so, all right, I'll let that rest. We still have the $300,000 in debt, well, and, and we still I, have a problem. And I'm worried. You know, when you first picked up, there's a lot of remorse in your voice. There's a lot of angst. So I thought you had the I had it moment. No, but I'm a little worried that the bleeding's still going. Mm -hmm. Like, have you cut up your credit cards no, yet? No, no. Should have we you, even have move you, into this? Yeah. I mean, 300000 that is, that's a terrifying amount on that on that income and, okay and so Sharnice, i don't want us to run out of time here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna have put you on hold laura's gonna pick up we're gonna put you through financial peace university as our guest because i don't know how to help you on this call today uh there's too much going on here but you have a problem and the problem is you don't make enough to pay this debt off in a reasonable period of time so something's got to give on the income side of the equation and it may mean you live in an entirely different area of the nation unless you bought a condo and a co-op for 30 good. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, cool. Hey, huh. good good hour. Yeah. Thanks that's for good. hanging out. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Christina Ellis, number one best-selling author and Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions. The phone number is 888-825-5225. We're going to go to GT in Roanoke, Virginia to start this hour. Hi, GT. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm all right. A little, little nervous and a little concerned after checking my credit statement the other day. Okay. What's up? Well... 
I've got over five hundred thousand dollars in debt, and um, I'm getting ready to sell a house, but I just don't know what to do with the money, and I'm worried I made a mistake. Okay, five hundred thousand dollars in debt on what? Um, thirty thousand dollar tr- in truck, uh, thirty five thousand on land at the lake, one hundred and thirty five thousand on the house that we're getting ready to sell, and three hundred and fifty thousand on the house we just bought. Okay, and what's your household income? Uh, one hundred and sixty to one hundred and eighty, depending on overtime. Okay, all right. Yeah, I would encourage you to separate out the debt when you're kind of looking at it, because that is overwhelming when you're having all of your... Pr- the 350 is your primary mortgage, right? Yes, it, oh. it is. And that we're moving into that one within the month. Tell us a little bit about the house you're about to sell with the 135 that you mentioned. How much equity is in that house? Uh, we've got it under contract for 260 okay. okay. So what did you... You've already closed on the house that's 350 that's your main house right and that's your old house right the uh, 350 is the one that we closed on that we're moving into the other one is the old house yes how much did you put down we on? haven't closed the 350 mm-hmm. uh none but you cl- sort of uh go ahead go ahead how, how did you do that um it was a situation where it was about to be foreclosed on and it was a great deal. It's probably worth five, five fifty, and um, we just we the foreclosing bank wouldn't allow us to make a contingent on selling our own home. Right, and so you just went and got a bank loan. Yes. Okay. Is that is the three fifty now on a permanent mortgage, or is it still yes. a bank loan? Permanent. Okay. All right. So you're set up then. The other house is sold. When you sell it, you've got the money to pay off the truck. And uh, the, the other thirty-five thousand, right? Yes. And you'll be debt-free other than your home. Yes. Okay. Where's the overwhelm part? Uh, just seeing half a million dollars in debt. I've never had that much before in my life. Okay. So you're doing all this two-step, and you just didn't look at how many different squares you were stepping on. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And but now, once you finish the dance. It's not overwhelming anymore, really. No, no, I guess not. I mean, you got three hundred fifty thousand dollars house house payment. That's it. You've got um, another sixty thousand dollars laying in your checking account that we need to set some aside for your rainy day fund, your emergency fund. Let's call that thirty five thousand, and that gives you thirty thousand to put on some other stuff. Um, maybe get your yeah. retirement and your kids' college started with some of that. Um, and so the, the okay. end of the, okay. the end of the story turns out the, the, the wake up call and the lesson to be learned, it sounds like is that the way you went at this left you more vulnerable than you like to be. And I would agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there was a moment here and we're kind of still sitting in it at this moment until this house closes, the first house closes. There's a moment here where you're five hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt, and if it went sideways, you'd be messed up. Yeah. Like if the market froze up and you couldn't sell that other house, you'd be up a creek right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would. And so I the would. the good news is, it sounds like you're going to get out by the hair of your chinny chin chin and end up in actually a good place. But the good news is, it scared you enough to make you concentrate more next time you were faced with a similar opportunity to hide the pee under a shell <laughs> yeah is that am i missing something no no you're spot on i just like i said I, it, you know once the numbers hit me it you know, it scared me good. and i was like oh, good. Well, what if something goes wrong yep good well, and, and remember so, that feeling yeah and so next time you go i you know because i don't enter i used to do stuff like that all the time and, and, and until i took my dadgum head off and I'm, you know, walking around, you know, like a Halloween costume or something looking for my head. It was gone. It just knocked it off. And I'm like, geez, man, my whole life got turned upside down here. I just about lo- I lost everything. I just about lost my marriage. I lost about it destroyed my whole freaking world. And so I don't ever I don't even go close to that stuff anymore. And so that can be your lesson. Like I, I kind of overstepped here. 
You know, I, I like I was walking along the edge of the cliff and the rocks were falling off and I acted like they weren't and I was singing and whistling a tune and and I made it back lie safe, but I'm not gonna take that path again. I don't like being that close to the edge. And that's a good lesson. So just learn the lessons, GT. That's all I would tell you. Yeah, and then just use that the lessons you've learned to continue forward being responsible with your finances. Now you stay know? away from the edge of the dead gun cliff. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, it's that's really what it does come down to. So very, very good question. And um, so it's a good example. And, and, you know, his emotion came up and caught him. Uh, but if this had gone sideways and, and but now that it's turned out, it's really going to leave him in a very good place, a very reasonable place. He's debt free, yeah. everything but his house. Great Tr- income. $350,000 mortgage with $180,000 income. That's not out of line. This is all very doable. OK, he ends up in a good place. But this is an example of. When he started this process, he doesn't know that's going to turn out, and that's what caught him and took his breath away. Most people don't even bother to have their breath taken away. They just go, oh, that's what I planned, and that's what happened. Here's the, the debt only works, or buying two houses at one time only works, or doing these things only works when it works. And most of the time, life doesn't work exactly the way you had it planned. And, and so that's when it gets your dadgum head taken off and that's where you get to experience the borrower is slave to the lender and a foolish man devours all he has and um in the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil and these bible verses that talk about living on less than you make having an emergency fund having a plan and not being in debt and that you know that plan works in good times and in bad times and so uh, we had a call in an earlier hour today where I told a guy, do not buy the second house until the first one is sold. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Same, same scenario here because you can get caught. Now, good news is GT got out. I'm happy for him. Happy he didn't learn the lesson except put his stomach in his throat without having to learn the lesson. You know, that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm happy that there's no harm, no foul. Uh, I don't wish bad things on people. What I try to do is help you avoid setting yourself up where bad things can get you. Don't let them get you. It's Halloween. This is the Ramsey Show. Christina Ellis, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today, best-selling author, Ramsey Personality. Last week, we announced our Spring Building Wealth live tour, and tickets are really selling fast. The VIP tickets in Indianapolis and Anaheim sold out within 48 hours. The Building Wealth live events are going to walk you through a simple but proven plan that will help you save money, build wealth, and make smart decisions in this crazy economy. What's happening out there? Despite what the news and the Internet say, it is still possible. Join me, Rachel Cruz, Ken Coleman, Dr. John Deloney, George Campbell for a night of hope and normalcy this spring. The tour dates available today, Indianapolis, February 16th, Austin, Texas, February the 23rd, and Anaheim on May the 2nd. Tickets start at $39. Our fall events sold out in days. You do not want to wait on this. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events to get your tickets, and particularly, you better get them like today if you want VIP or platinum on any of these. They go first, and they go early, and they go really, really fast. Our question of the day is from Blind. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your window blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. 
Today's question comes from Trish in Missouri. Our son graduated from high school in 2021. He decided to use his scholarships, working income, and a small subsidized federal loan to pay for college so far. He has done an amazing job with his finances. He had 17,700 saved for him in his 529, but he wanted to leave it alone and use it for his later years of school when he might need it even more. The 521, 529 was doing so well we neglected to look at the funds he was in and move it to safer funds as he got closer to 18 years old. It grew to 18,700 by 2022, but has dropped significantly to 14,800 as of today. We realize now this was a mistake. Now with less than three years of college left, the market still looking grim. Do we move it and cut our losses, tell him to use it all that he can now, or just wait it out? Also, Missouri, where our 529 is, as of right now, will not let us use 529 to repay back loans later. Thanks for the advice. Hmm. This is interesting. I, I feel like the first thing I would do is just kind of talk to you guys about your mindset. I mean, you're saying that he's taken out federal uh, subsidized student loans so far and that he's also doing great with his finances. I think the fact that even debt was on the table to begin with isn't great. You had a 529 available and then you still take took out a student loan, I kind of would just challenge you first and foremost to go, let's let's not do debt. Like, let's first establish that mindset and take it off the table and then explore options from there. I think if that was kind of the conversation from the beginning, you probably would have used the 529 earlier on and he wouldn't have taken out a loan. Um, but Dave, I'm curious about your your thoughts on this. Cause well, it's we're never going to tell you to take out a loan. Exactly. Period. Okay. So now we got to figure it out. Because here's what taking out a loan is in this situation. If you're taking out a loan so that you can leave this alone and let it come back up, that's like saying, I'm going to borrow $14,800 hoping and invest it in the stock market, hoping it will go up. Well, you would never do that. That's dumber than a rock. And so, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to take out a loan in order to give this time to ride back up. What we are going to do is put Junior to work. Yeah, W-O-R-K. I want him busting it. And uh, I want him, you know, using Christina's materials and applying for scholarships, like a bazillion of them. I want him to apply, 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 apply. I want him working all the time. And um, then the other question I've got is, where is he in school? You know, is he in an expensive school you can't afford? So, in other words, if you want to leave this money alone and let it come back up, which is a good idea, actually, the only way to do that is find the money to pay for school. Because three years, if he's got three years left, that's a lot of it's time. It's going to come back up. Right. And you got to find the money anyway, because this is not enough to get him through school. Well, and if they continue going forward with the way they're going forward, three years of taking out loans is going to add up to a lot of money. Like yeah. you're saying that it's a good, yeah. he's done well with his finances so far, but three more years of taking out loans, that's not going to be good. So yeah. it's amazing the creative options you come up with when you take debt off the table. He's going to have to maybe look at what school is he at? Can he go to a cheaper school? Is there some sort of employer he can work for that has a tuition assistance program? What scholarships are out there? Can he talk to the financial aid office and see if they can offer him anything else. Like when you don't have debt as an option, then you really start fighting for yourself and trying to figure out what are the most strategic ways for me. A ton of these retailers like Target, for instance, mm -hmm. and others are, uh, if you're working a certain number of hours, they're so desperate, they're willing to pay tuition. Legit. And, and so, yeah, go, that, that and that changes the numbers on what you're making while working there. I mean, you might be making 18, you might be making $22 an hour and getting free tuition. Potentially thousands of dollars in tuition. Like right. that is a lot of benefit right there. Plus you're building your resume. I mean, you may be starting in a basic retail position, but maybe you can be a manager by the time you graduate. And so, so if you're not going to borrow any more money for the next three years, you got to figure out how to pay to, way to pay for college anyway. So it, while you're doing that, that gives you also time to let this money grow back before you cash it in. Yep. Because I'll tell you that in 12 months, I think you'll be fine. It's going to be back. That's my guess. Might be 18. Might be 18. But bear markets, there's very few bear markets would have lasted longer than that when you start this process. This bear market started basically at the first of this year. And a four-year bear market is almost non-existent in history. There's almost none of them. And so, you know, two years, you're going to be fine. 18 months, you're going to be fine. Something like that. You're going to make some money on this money. But the, the point is, you've got to have some money anyway 
to get through school without debt. And so we need to go find that money from working, from scholarships, and for work scholarships, whatever it is we're doing, and from school choice uh, and so forth. So you've got a lot of work to do, period, across the board. And uh, the book is Debt-Free Degree. It is in the Ramsey store at RamseySolutions.com, and it will help you with this process and Austin if you can figure out who this person is and how to send it to them go ahead and send them one okay I don't know whether what our connectivity is on all these questions that come in by email and other things so but if you can do that get him out get him one out I'll get her one out I guess and but yeah the, the It's almost like uh, we're doing good with our money while we borrow student loans is as dumb a statement as I don't have any debt. Oh, wait, I've got student loans. Yeah, that's debt. <laughs> it's just right. those are both dumb statements. But okay. I think there is that mindset now. People keep saying that student loans, it's good debt. And people just seem like that, that for some reason. Surely seems to, to be- God, people are starting to realize it's bad debt. I mean, it's so bad the president has to forgive it. But still keep giving out loans. Yeah. Well, I, thank you for that. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, you ruined the whole thing there. <laughs> <laughs> Robert's with us. Robert is in uh, New Hampshire. Hey, Robert, what's up? Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, so, me and my wife have been on a credit card with thirty-five to thirty-seven thousand dollars for the last fifteen to twenty years. Um, wondering if pulling from my 401k to pay that is smart or not. <laughs> well, you, if you don't change your habits, you go right back in debt, wouldn't you? Correct. So we, we, don't have, we don't have a credit card problem. We got a habit problem. <laughs> With just the one credit card, everything else has been gone. <laughs> and we have a minimizing problem. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you call me up because you're stressed out about your credit card and then you go well it's just one okay <laughs> which one is it is it a problem or isn't it okay <laughs> yeah, <definitely> a problem. <laughs> so no we're not cashing out your 401k for two reasons one is you got to change you and that's the yeah. best answer for your long-term wealth building and two is um, if you cash out your 401k, they're going to charge you a 10% penalty plus your tax rate. So you're going to get hit 30 to 40%. And so that's like saying, hey, Dave, I want to borrow money at 30% interest to pay off my credit card. I would, of course, say no. And you would even say no to that, Robert. So no, we're not doing yeah. that. So okay. the question I'm actually asking, do I take a loan out against my 401k? No, 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 no. You can't borrow your way out of debt, sir. Doesn't work. You can't get out of a hole while you're digging out the bottom. It's time to address Robert. Look in the mirror, say you're the problem. Look in the mirror, say you're the solution. Hold on, I'm going to send you a book called Total Money Makeover that's helped 10 million people fix what you need to fix. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey personality is my co-host today, number one best-selling author in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Brian and Valerie are here. Hey guys, how are you? Doing great. We're doing awesome. Welcome. Good to have you guys. How much? Where you guys live? Denver, Colorado. Cool. Welcome yeah. to Nashville. Thank you. How much have you paid off? Well, married, we paid off one hundred and sixty thousand in twenty-two months, mm-hmm. and single. Or all together, we paid off 205 in 34 months. Okay. Before the 22 months started, or is that total, including everything? Uh, that's before the 22 months started. So the total is more like uh, 365000 Or it's 205 total in 34 months. Oh, okay. That's yeah. the total. That's what yeah. I was asking. Okay. Sorry. All right. So that's a good, 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 good. Yeah. All right. And so uh, during the 22 months, what was yes. your range of income? It was 213 to 273 All right. Very cool. What do you guys do for a living? I'm an engineer. Mm-hmm. And I'm a manager for an engineering firm uh, for a CAD manager. 
Ah, mm-hmm. okay. Very yes. cool. Kind of figured out how you two met. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, all right. And uh, so we had 205000 total. Yes. And started working on it before we're married, finished it after we're married. Tell us the story. How did all this work? Yeah. So I, it started in August, 2020. So right, or yeah, 2020, right before the pandemic and, uh, or August, 2019. And uh-huh. I was in interning as an engineer before I got my first job. And my good friend, Mark, who is a Marine reservist, just want to uh-huh. point that out. So you can imagine how uh, intense he is, uh-huh. but he came into my office and kept trying to get me to do this Ramsey thing in this FPU class. And I was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And uh, finally, two weeks before the class started, he came in and he closed my door and was like, why won't you take this class? <laughs> and I was, I, I think I just broke down crying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just broke down. And uh, This is like illegal right here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is how we do in the armed forces. <laughs> so he, I kind of opened up to him and... Uh, my family, we'd lost four people in four years. Mm. Um, and dealing with PTSD, I'd just gotten out of the military mm. and I was broke. I was in six figures of debt and mm-hmm. I just, I was scared and ashamed. And I was making less than 40,000 with six figures of debt. Mm. So. And he could see your eyes. Yeah. And he convinced me to take it. And I was pretty resistant for six weeks. Hmm. It wasn't until the seventh class that I was like, okay, wow. fine. Wow. I know. You are a hard case. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I mean, usually first or second class, I, I get them. I mean, seven classes. I was so angry, especially about the student loans. Yeah. I was convinced I couldn't go to, to college without student loans. And then I was you just did. convinced. Yeah, okay. So. Wow. Yeah, it was. Okay, so uh, you, that, yeah. that gets you started on the whole thing. Yes. And, and then poor Brian wanders into the story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was our first date. I was talking about it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, if you're not on board, I'm just not sure about this, you know. <laughs> so our FPU classes became date night. And uh, it was yeah. the only way I kept, got to keep seeing her. So. <laughs> <laughs> you went from I'm not going, I'm going to cry about yes. it to uh, we're not even going on a second date if you're not in, dude. Yes. <laughs> wow. That's a, this is a what? It, seventh class was thorough. <laughs> I mean, at least the conversion was thorough. But then she was all in. Yeah. Then I was all in. And then some. And I yeah. think it was Chris Hogan. It yeah. was three years ago. I think he was in that one. Yeah, and he was. his deep voice just really got me. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh. <laughs> I need to do this. Yeah. So yeah, it was very, it's very commanding. It is yeah. commanding. Yeah. Very cool. Good yes. for you guys. So you, you finally get convinced and then you get started. What did the journey of paying off the debt look like? Um, it, it had its ups and downs. Um, you know, we stuck together and uh, we did our, our first budget meeting. Um, that was that was fun. That was six hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> six hours. Hours. Yeah, I'm a I'm a, it's spread, a date, right? Yeah, this, this is pretty much. Yeah. This is two engineers, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a nerd with the spreadsheet. He and could it not took, give up the spreadsheet. No, no, <laughs> not at all. And then um, it, it became easier once we kind of jumped into the full. Like we're all on board. We're not doing a Davish. Um, we got the Every Dollar app, and so that I had to. Re- release control of my spreadsheet oh, and that's um, devastating <laughs> i think it was but it was it was totally worth it and you know us being a, a new married couple um financials can be a real struggle and a real stress on the marriage but um we went into it knowing we were on the same plan and uh it, it just made it's made our marriage so much more successful and, yeah. and wonderful yeah. who were your biggest cheerleaders in the process well, our best friends, Lisa and JT, came with us All today. Right, way to go, guys. Yeah. Um, and then our FPU coordinators, I think they're listening right now, Mary yeah. and Mark. Mm-hmm. And oh, that, Mark was Mark. the coordinator. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. He's, he's recruiting for the class. I got it. I okay. mean, he was all in. So. I love it. <laughs> Way to go, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So so you truly experienced that resistance. And now yes. you are here. You went all in. You paid all it in. off. So if you were in Mark's position and you're, I mean, you're in his position right now, there are people listening who feel that same level yeah. of resistance. What would you tell them? Well, I would just tell them for someone like me who I just, I was so, I just thought I was so strong and I could do this all on my own. And, um, I was too ashamed and embarrassed 
um, to, and too prideful to think that I was doing something wrong. And so I just, I think the biggest thing is to be humble enough to put your pride down. And uh, if it's not working for you, try something new. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. It's so not good. like it's your identity. I mean, it, right. yeah. But people treat it so, yeah. we hold on to it with such a tight fist. We do. Yeah. And so yeah. That, that whole part of your journey is actually more beautiful than the paying off of the debt. I've changed completely. Um, I was so resistant and so hard headed and now it just feels like I'm a different person. Mm -hmm. um, well, you had so much loss. Yeah. And and then you had some anger to go with it. Yes. And you yeah, you had quite a little chemistry thing going on here. I had a lot going on. A little chemistry set. A little <laughs> yeah. chemistry set going on here. I was so. just mad all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that, then you just aimed your mad at the right thing. Yes. And knocked it out. Yeah. And that, that there is a, something that sets you free when you do that. That's very powerful. Yes. Very cool. You guys are you guys are a neat couple. And uh, what you've been through and what you've been through together is very 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 strong. You're set up to win at an unbelievable level now, uh, because not only that, but uh, you probably heard us say that in the millionaire study that we did, the number one uh, career choice of millionaires is engineer. And yes. You're, and we have two of them here. So <laughs> that makes they have me twice, really the, twice the shot at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's and fine. you've been through FPU, and you're thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly converted by less than seven. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> yeah, I still, I still can't I get over that. But yeah, it's good. It's well, very good. what a way to start your marriage! Like you yeah. can just tell by the way y'all look at each other that yeah. you're so connected. Yeah. Yeah. That's just powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, we got a copy of the Total Money Makeover for you. You'll be able to give that away as you continue to uh, tell people what has happened in your life. We're so proud of you. You guys Thank are you. amazing, amazing couple. And, of course, Baby Steps Millionaires, because that's the next chapter in your story. You're yes. right on your way to that. And a uh, one-year membership to Financial Peace University that you can give away as you're talking about it. So the Live and Give Bundle is just for you guys. We're so proud of you. Very, very, very well done. So All Thank right, you. if you got to tell people one thing or two things they got to do to get out of debt, what do you tell them? Um, I, everybody says it's a budget, but, it, I mean, it's true. You have to stick to it. Um, and don't. Everybody has a mountain to climb. We we all have. Doesn't matter how small or how large it is, um, we all have to do it. And so just stick with it, uh, stay on the path, and you'll climb that. It's, it's uh, one bite at a time, right? The elephant. That's how you eat the elephant. Yep. Beautifully yep. done. Yep. Well done, Brian and Valerie, Denver, Colorado. What a great story. Two hundred and five thousand paid off, single and married, over thirty-four months, making two thirteen to two seventy-three. Count it down. Let's hear a right. debt-free scream. Right. Three, two, two one. one. I'm, I'm debt-free. <laughs> Keep you coming back. I love it, baby. Woo! Woo! This is the Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Mark Twain said, to get the full value of joy, you must have someone to divide it with. Ah, well done, Mark Twain. Mark Twain, the romantic, who knew? Um, hey, folks, if you like this show, please do us a favor. We need three favors from you. One is subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on the podcast. Number two, leave a review. That would be a five-star review. We don't really need your one stars. Thank you very much. And uh, share it with a friend. Tell somebody to listen. Tell somebody to jump in, be part of the program, be part of a uh, – tell them what it's done for you. I mean, that young couple there, we got to meet them at the break. Absolutely amazing and uh, just powerful stories. And uh, you guys on radio, 
YouTube gets a little bit of glimpse of it, but on radio, you didn't get to see her eyes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just lit up. I mean, she's just on fire. And uh, they, they, you know, they're, again, they, Financial Peace University, um, the podcast, the, you know, the whole thing. And, um, and, and now they're, uh, I mean, what would you pay to get rid of $205,000 worth of debt? It's $99 to go through FPU. I mean, this is like a good trade. That's the way I see it. This is a very good ROI. <laughs> yeah, it's a good ROI. Daniel is with us in Mobile, Alabama. Hi, Daniel. How are you? Hey, I'm great. It's an honor to be on with you. Well, thank you, sir. How can we help? I've got a, I've got two questions. My first question is the way the market is today. I've lost roughly 60000 You know, yeah, I've got a Vanguard target retirement account. Mm -hmm. My question is to stop the bleeding. So you got like a half million dollars in it? No, I had about two hundred twenty-five thousand in it. And you lost sixty thousand since when? Uh, since about a year in the past year. Well, the market's down thirteen percent. That wouldn't be sixty thousand on two twenty. Well, I'm down about one sixty. Wow! Um, oh, you're down about sixty. You said. Yeah, oh, down to yeah. 160, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, I and you. my question, I've been listening to a lot of things on the radio, and t I've talked to a few people. What is your opinion about indexed annuities? Would I be? Would there be any advantage to going to something like that just to stop the bleeding? Yeah, it's too late. I mean, it, the, the, you're not stopping the bleeding unless you think it's going to continue to bleed out, and I don't. Um. And so the only person that gets hurt on a roller coaster is one jumps off in the middle of the ride. And so, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm a fan of uh, your initial selection of funds. Um, but how old are you? 66. Okay, I'm 62, and I have mine across four types, growth, growth and income, aggressive growth, and international. And in the last 12 months, the stock market and the Dow Jones has lost about 13%, and that's about what I'm down, is about 13%. You're down more than 13%, is what you're telling me. So um, I would not move it to indexed annuities. I don't have a dime in indexed annuities. Um, and uh, so... Do you need the money today? No. Okay. Um, you've got other money? Yes. Okay. What's it in? Um, well, <clears throat> I'm retired. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, I've got my ret teacher retirement. Mm -hmm. I've got my social, social security. Mm -hmm. um, I'm debt free. Mm -hmm. Except <laughs> if I cost say a debt, um Helping pay for law school for a one of my my daughter. Okay, right. so that's really the only thing that I have. That's your only nest egg. Uh, yes, and you're living off of I your mean, teacher pension and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I've got. I had about seventy five thousand just in savings that I'd been putting some, take diverting some to there to be ready for the law school tuition. Good. Okay, that's and, fine. Yeah, that's where it should be. That's good. All right. Um. Well, the the target fund that you have, or the target funds that you have, what's the track record on them long term? How old are they? I can't answer that. Okay. I got in about twenty, about twenty fourteen. Okay, so you've been you've been in eight years, and mm -hmm. it's not been a problem. It's just this particular downturn. You really took it on the chin. Yeah. You've ridden out a couple of other downturns, though. Yes. Like spring of 2020, remember that? It dropped like crazy? Remember that? I, I, I'll i be honest with you. I, for most, most of the time, I don't even look at it. Okay. All right. Well, if you go back and look, your, your fund, most funds, dropped substantially around the COVID quarantine hit. Mm -hmm. And then they came back in September. And we're back to where they were. They're back even. But a lot of people jumped out with that down, downturn because they're freaking out over everything over COVID, right? Um, right. And so right now we got a Biden freak out going on or whatever you want to call it, inflation freak out. Um, and uh, corporate profits are down and so stocks are down. 
and um, because inflation's putting the squeeze on the profit margins as well as uh, causing prices to go up. So, um, Daniel, no index funds I would not do to answer your question. W- what I would do is sit down with a Smart Vester Pro and um, – Let's do a little bit of learning because I'm not sure I can answer your question without I want to go back on this target fund and say I've got to get comfortable with the history of it that its recovery rate is about as good as the market's recovery rate. If I get comfortable with that, I'm probably just going to leave it alone. If I'm uncomfortable that this is a good selection and I need to move it into some other funds, I'm going to move it from one set of funds that are down to another set of funds that are down that have a better recovery rate when the market turns up. I got you. That's what I would do. Uh, But no, the index fund is mythology because it has to ride the other stuff too. It's indexed off the stock market. That's what it's indexed off of. And they put some checks and balances in there and charge a double commissions uh, to where you think you've got your principal protected and other stuff. It's an insurance product. And so I, I wouldn't screw with it. I don't put any money in that kind of stuff. I just ride these waves. And the good news is you don't have to have the money, and you can afford to ride the wave. What you need is, and what I would need if I were you, and I'm asking you to get this, is some intellectual um, comfort that the recovery rate on this fund when the stock market recovers is reasonable, that it's going to come back as the market comes back meaning that the fund is riding the market wave, not just a bad fund. Um, And it's scaring me because it's down further than the market pretty substantially. So that's why I want you to look at that. If you told me you were off 13%, I'd say, I'd just tell you to sit tight and ride it because that's what the market's off. But when you're down more than 13% in in 12 months, then if you're down from 220 to to 160 in that period of time, then there's something else going on here. And I want to look at that. This, this may be a more volatile fund, which might mean it might recover faster, actually. So you just need to learn the fund. So jump on RamseySolutions.com, click on SmartVestor Pro, and learn. Because, Christina, the trick with this is history is the only shot you've got at getting some comfort mm. on these things. I mean, if you look at a fund that's got an 80-year history, like I've owned one that's 80 years old, okay? And I can go back and go, it's got 11.2% rate of return for 80 freaking years. And it's down 13%. I can kind of be calm. You know, history gives me comfort, right? Um, but but if, if, I, if I don't know those things, then it's harder to be calm. Yeah, and I think this is such an important conversation right now to have because I think a lot of Gen Z millennials who this is their first time riding out, you know, a bear market, a rough market. It's just important. Like you said, the only person who gets hurt on a roller coaster is the person who jumped off. You know, it's just important to be able to look historically, you know, what are these markets like? And then just look at the funds Mm -hmm. and see the history, see the track record, and then have peace as you move forward and not freak out and jump off. The great news is, is that Daniel can live on his pension and he can just leave this alone Mm. and he can afford to let it ride back up. That's the great news in this call. So, very well done. Very well done. That puts us out the Ramsey Show in the books. Our thanks to Austin, Ben, Zach, Andrew, and James in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey. Christina Ellis, my co-host, will be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. to make a change with your money? Want to know where to start? Take our three-minute money quiz to get a plan you can follow. Go to RamseySolutions.com and search for Get Started to get a plan for your money.